Coming up on BCN Today. A fatal crash on Highway 3 leaves one man dead. Plus, it was graduation day for our city's newest firefighters. And Alberta's opposition leader kicked out of the legislature chamber after things get heated. Your Canada. Your Southern Alberta. Your stories. From our studios in the heart of Lethbridge, it's BCN Today with Jeanette Roche. Hello and thanks for joining us. RCMP are investigating a fatal crash Tuesday, which backed up traffic for several hours along Highway 3 west of Fort McLeod. Police and emergency crews were called out around 9 a.m. to an area between Brockett and Fort McLeod. Pecani RCMP say a car was heading eastbound on Highway 3 when it struck a westbound cattle liner head on. A 75-year-old man from Pincher Creek was killed and died at the scene. He was the lone occupant of the car. The driver of the semi was not hurt. The training is complete and the Lethbridge Fire Department introduced their newest graduates during a ceremony that took place at South Southminster United Church on Tuesday. Almost one year ago, we opened about uh, 120 applications and today we get to see six recruits graduate. And what that means is uh, that these men have walked uh, quite a journey. Uh, they have uh, th the right qualities that, that they bring to the table and those are a sense of teamwork, those are a sense of pride in the service that we, that, that we offer, a, a sense of really wanting to come and do the very best job possible for the citizens of Lethbridge. Here in Lethbridge they uh, model an integrated service model so you can be a firefighter and a paramedic together. Uh, most big cities because of large numbers and stuff they either can be one or the other but here in Lethbridge we're very lucky because we get to be both so I'm extremely happy to be done my recruit, uh, be a part of the team and be able to get back out into the city and serve the community. It was a lot of training so it was all really really good so I feel like we're really well prepared but also at the same time we're still going to have a lot to learn. Uh, especially with the experience and stuff, but uh, as far as trainings went, it's, it's helped us a lot. I feel pretty confident with getting on the road and serving the community and uh, hopefully doing good there. According to the Alberta government, the average experienced firefighter has an annual salary of around $93,000 per year. Alberta's NDP opposition leader has been kicked out of the legislator legislature chamber after refusing to apologize for comments about the United Conservative government's plan to fire the province's election watchdog. Rachel Notley told the House that government House leader Jason Nixon was making misleading statements on proposed legislation that would end the contract of Lauren Gibson. Gibson has been investigating United Conservative fundraising misdeeds during its 2017 leadership race and has imposed more than $200,000 in fines. Legislature rules don't allow for someone to say that one member is deliberately misleading or lying. Nixon contends that no one is being fired. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau will unveil his cabinet today in a ceremony that will be low-key compared to his triumphant first ceremony in 2015. There will be no adoring crowds or bagpipes at Rideau Hall this year as the Liberals find themselves reduced to a minority in a bitterly divided country. Trudeau has taken a full month since winning re-election to put together his new cabinet. Likely, the biggest shift will involve Christian Freeland, who is widely expected to take on the role of Deputy Prime Minister and Minister in charge of Intergovernmental Affairs. A strike over working conditions by roughly 3,200 Canadian National Railway employees is prompting warnings from agriculture and energy industry groups. The Teamsters Canada Rail Conference announced the strike Monday night after the two parties failed to reach a deal. Conductors, train persons, and yard workers took to the picket lines, halting freight trains across the country. Grain elevator operators and farmers are warning about lost sales and contract penalties. CN delivers more than a half a million tons of grain to Canadian elevators per week. The Canadian Association of Petroleum Producers says the strike comes at a time when there's a shortage of pipelines to send crude to market. Coaldale and Picture Butte RCMP responded to a call of a hit pedestrian around 7 p.m. Monday north of Lethbridge. 
Police say a 43-year-old Lethbridge man was crossing Highway 25 near Township Road 92 when a half-ton truck hit him. He was thrown into the east ditch and was transported to Chinook Hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Highway 25 was blocked for around three hours during the investigation. Police say the pedestrian was wearing dark-colored clothing on a dark stretch of highway when he was hit. It was a special day at Lethbridge College Tuesday as six new inductees were honored for the Kodiaks Hall of Fame. This year we have two unique um, builders being inducted, first time ever, and it's to recognize that um, the contributions that they've made to Kodiak Athletics, which have been great and long-standing as well as you, um, with Val and Flora Mattioti, uh, when the building was actually erected, right, they were a big contributor and have continued to be a big contributor to Kodiak Athletics. They're a great group of guys and girls that we had a good time. 1962-63, the women's team were in the Junior Alberta Championships, which they won, and then in 1967-68, the men's team from the Kodiaks uh, won the uh, Alberta Championships. We were 10 women who didn't know each other. We came from all different parts of Alberta and came to join the basketball team and ended up being champions. Like, it, it was wonderful. The Kodiaks Hall of Fame was founded in 2017 and inductions are made every other year. The most highly anticipated witness in the Trump impeachment inquiry will be on Capitol Hill today. Ambassador Gordon Sondland is more directly entangled than any previous witness in Trump's efforts to get Ukraine to investigate political rival Joe Biden. Trump has recently said that he barely knows Sondland, but the ambassador routinely bragged about his proximity to Trump and drew alarm from the Foreign Service and National Security officers as part of an irregular channel of diplomacy led by Trump lawyer Rudy Giuliani. Days after addressing Don Cherry's dismissal during a hockey night in Canada broadcast, sports broadcaster Ron McLean says he doesn't believe his former co-host is a racist. McLean, the longtime co-host of Coach's Corner with Cherry, is in Edmonton to receive an honorary Doctor of Laws degree at the University of Alberta. Before receiving the degree, McLean told reporters, it's been a difficult time. You know Don well. Um, oh, of course. Do you think he's a racist? Oh, oh that's a silly uh, thing for me to even project. What, what, what I know is we made the mistake. Um, I, I, I mean, no. We, Don has, you know, I think, started to come around on... Uh, and here I am doing the news cycle, but uh, you know, he, he knows we projected an idea, uh, an attitude or a behavior on someone. F and he knows, I feel like in what I've listened to, he's, he's trying now to, uh, to admit that to that. I, I just kind of say it's a, it's a fork in the road. Uh, you know, Don made a choice, I made a choice, and I, I will hope uh, that just because we diverged on the road at this point, the road can certainly converge. Cert more to do with our friendship, right? To do with the relationship. Uh, and then the rest, uh, I think, has spoken for itself. So I, I would rather than, you know, cause, as Gary Bettman said, the commissioner of the NHL, create a new news cycle. Just let's all kind of, uh, you have your say, and, and I've had mine, and Don's had his, I believe. So there. I obviously feel, like I said in my address on Saturday night, that, uh, you know, I can't back down from uh, the difficulty you know, I, I very, uh, I was, I was very keen to apologize. I, I felt very uh, much the need to, uh, to continue to represent uh, the show because it's uh, look, we all love hockey. We love Don. We love hockey. We love the bridge building aspects of our game. Um, we're caught, you know, on a, on a, on a situation that, uh, you know, it, it needed to be addressed. And Three of Ontario's four major teachers' unions are taking steps toward walking off the job as they negotiate with the government for new contracts. Meanwhile, the union representing public high school teachers says its members voted 96% in favour of a strike. Since the beginning, I've demonstrated the government's intent to be reasonable during the negotiation process. We invited our labour partners to begin bargaining early in the hopes of avoiding disruption at the beginning of the school year. We doubled our investment and hired permanent psychologists.
and psychotherapists. We enhanced special education and mental health supports in class and provided funding to ensure hundreds of education workers could return to the classroom. We updated our curriculum, focusing on STEM, financial literacy, and back to basics math to teach our kids the skills and the knowledge they need to succeed in a competitive job market. Our members are telling us and they're telling the government that they are frustrated with the pace of negotiations. They are losing patience with a government that refuses to engage in meaningful discussion about major issues that affect the quality of learning in our schools. Our members have given us the strong strike mandate that we requested. While we're pleased about that, we are extremely disappointed that we're still here trying to move these negotiations forward. We're looking at a high of zero degrees today with periods of snow, but is the snow going to stick around? A complete look at weather forecast is coming up right after the break. Stay with us. Here's a look at our weather highlights for today and tomorrow in Lethbridge. Today we're going to be seeing some mixed precipitation, a mix of snow and rain, but a high of zero, a low of minus seven overnight. Tomorrow though, lots of sunshine back in the forecast and a high of four degrees. Not too bad at all. Looking ahead to the five day forecast, we're going to be seeing tons of sunshine coming our way over the weekend. Friday, a high of seven degrees, six degrees for Saturday, and also for Grey Cup Sunday, a lovely six degrees, lots of sunshine over the weekend. A mix of sun and cloud coming back to us on Monday and Tuesday with highs of two degrees and going down to minus three for next Tuesday. So not too bad. Uh, the Almanac says the highs and lows for this time of year should be about three degrees or a low of minus eight. The high temperature on this day though was in 19, or sorry, rather 2005, it was 17 degrees and it was a yucky minus 32 degrees back in 1996. The sun rose this morning at 10 to eight and will be setting this evening at 4.44 p.m as the days get shorter and shorter as we get closer and closer to Christmas. Um, the West Coast today, lots of sunshine, 11 degrees expected in Victoria, 10 degrees for Vancouver. Um, up in Edmonton, they're gonna be seeing a mix of sun and cloud, but they are expecting some flurries as well with a high of one degree, a high of minus one degree in uh, Calgary with a mix of sun and cloud. We're seeing lots of snow across the prairies today. Saskatoon, a high of minus five, minus five expected in Regina as well. Mix of sun and cloud though in both of those cities. Snow falling in Winnipeg today, a high of minus one over there. Over to our friends in the east, uh, we're gonna be seeing uh, scattered clouds um, in Toronto, a high of seven degrees, a high of three degrees in Ottawa. And Montreal is gonna be expecting some snow today with a high of one degree. Over in Atlantic Canada, Fredericton will be seeing a mix of sun and cloud with a high of three degrees. We are expecting showers though across the rest of the Maritimes. Halifax will see a high of four degrees. Charlottetown also four degrees. Showers in both of those cities. Same with St. John's, Newfoundland, a high of four degrees and they're expecting rain. That's your forecast. Here's a look at your community Here's calendar. Here's your Bridge City News community calendar. Do you have a knack for wrapping gifts and spreading Christmas cheer? Volunteer Lethbridge is looking for gift wrappers for their holiday gift wrapping fundraiser, taking place November 18th to December 24th at Park Place Shopping Center. Orientation will be provided. For more information, contact Chelsea at 403-332-4320. Come to the Nika Yuko Japanese Garden on Friday, November 29th, as they kick off the season with their Winter Light Festival, which will run until January 31st. On that evening, the gates will open at 6 p.m. with greetings from sponsors and dignitaries at 7. Admission is $9 for adults. Admission is $9 for adults, $7 for kids ages 6 to 15, and ticket packages, which include food and drinks, are also available. For more information, visit nikayuko.com. It's the 28th annual Mayor's Christmas Concert on Saturday, December 7th at Southminster United Church, beginning at 7 p.m. Enjoy your favorite Christmas carols performed by the Lethbridge Community Silver and Gold Bands with special guests, Nicole Agnes Davidson Senior and Junior Choirs. Come take part in this annual tradition and bring along a donation in support of the Lethbridge Food Bank and Interfaith Food Bank's Christmas Hope Campaign. For more information and to purchase tickets, visit lcbs.yapcity.com. And that's your Bridge City News Community Calendar. 
The city of Montreal is honoring a man who is being called a hero after he used his SUV to shield pedestrians from a speeding car. Eric Marciano's act of courage was recognized with a certificate of honor, and the mayor invited him to sign the city's official book. Marciano said he was only doing his duty when he made the split-second decision to act. I mean, he might have slammed into people. Yes, that's what I thought, and uh, I had to stop him. I was thinking a lot about what was happening in Europe with all these crazy uh, uh, drivers going into uh, crowded places, and I said this wasn't going to happen in our beautiful city. What led up to it was a, a, a car chase that uh, a driver was driving uh, recklessly towards pedestrians, so I figured I had to act, and uh, that's exactly what I did. If anything positive can come out of this, I hope this would be it, uh, that people would think of uh, others. Uh, and uh, just be more, uh, you know, uh, good citizens. And you feel like a hero yourself? No. Why is that? Why, why everyone else is calling you that? I, I can't, you have to ask them. But, but, but why don't you feel like a hero? I know, for me, it was just a natural thing to do, and if I had to do it again, I would do it again. Nice story. Let's look at some highlights from this day in history. The Nazi war crimes trial began in Nuremberg. Robert F. Kennedy was born, and Britain's future Queen Elizabeth II got married. This is Today in History. November 20th, 1945. Months after World War II ends in Europe, two dozen Nazi leaders go on trial before an international war crimes tribunal in Nuremberg, Germany. 1925. Violence or lawlessness or rioting makes no sense whatsoever in the United States. Robert F. Kennedy, one of the most enduring icons from American politics in the 1960s, is born in Brookline, Massachusetts. 1947. The whole world joins Britain in wishing two young people long life, prosperity, and happiness as they embark on their new life. Britain's Princess Elizabeth, future Queen Elizabeth II, marries Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, in London's Westminster Abbey. 1975. After nearly four decades of absolute rule, Spain's dictator, General Francisco Franco, dies in Madrid, two weeks before his 83rd birthday. 1910. Revolution breaks out in Mexico as Francisco Madero leads a revolt that sparks a wave of upheaval lasting the rest of the decade. And 1966. Welcome. In New York, the musical Cabaret, set in 1930s Berlin before the Nazis' rise to power, opens on Broadway. Today in History, November 20th, Tim McGuire, the Associated Press. A UK man is calling for more caution from medical and mental health services after ongoing irreversible gender reassignment surgery, which he now bitterly regrets. Peter Benjamin's story represents a warning to parents, government, medical, and educational services at a time when UK figures released by the National Health Service reveal a 2,500% increase in referrals to gender identity clinics over the past decade. When I was five or six years old, I had no thought of becoming a girl. I didn't, it didn't even cross my mind. It wasn't until I was exposed to seeing these men in dresses um, at this show. And that started me off. That started me off to wanting to dress as a woman. I had a job as a bus driver in 1984, and I was cross-dressing, and I found this club in Southampton where we could go along secretly, dress and be women for an hour or two, because it was underground back in, in the day then. Now, I thought this was fun. All the bright lights, the dancing, everything else. I thought, fantastic. This is, this is lovely. This is life. And I was doing this and I was also drinking heavily. Then 2011, I decided I've had enough of this. I'm going to come out as a full-time woman. I'm going to transition. I was depressed. I was lonely. I lost my soulmate. And I wanted to get this thing going. To counsellors 
and the internet did not help me one iota saying you're wrong in changing gender. They never said that to me. They said, go ahead. They encouraged me to be a woman. And it was totally the wrong information that I was receiving. Completely, totally wrong. I was happy. I was euphoric. I was happy that it was gone. But then when I got home and started living the real life, I wasn't happy. I was not happy. I went back down that pub and I was knocking them back. I was drinking. I didn't feel any different inside. I didn't feel like a woman. I didn't feel, I didn't feel different at all. God has done a miracle on me. I don't even think about dressing as a woman anymore, cross-dressing. All that's gone. It's com he's completely renewed my mind. And I don't, I don't even want to go down that road anymore. I am so happy being Pete and being with the Lord and being on fire for the Lord. I don't want anything else. I, I study my Bible now for a couple of hours every day. I I've got freedom. I go for walks now. I'm just praising God, just praising him for the beautiful countryside and for saving me. I pray for these transgender people. It's a lonely life. It's a depressive life. I wasn't antidepressants. I was lonely. I was going to commit suicide over this. I've now changed. My life has completely turned around. I've got a job. I go to work as Pete. I'm happy. And yeah, I'm just happy with my life. So, and I've got God. That's the main thing. I've got the Lord. Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And he's taken all that to the cross for me, which I'm so pleased. Just glory, Lord. Glory, Lord. Christmas is just around the corner. And so is the deadline to get in those shoe boxes for Operation Christmas Child. Recently, we had Randy Crossan from Samaritan's Purse Canada stop by our studio, and he talked about the rewards of being involved with Operation Christmas Child. Catch the full interview and hear powerful stories of how these shoeboxes are changing the lives of millions of kids around the world. That's coming up right after the break. Stay with us. <laughs> 